Hello and welcome to another exclusive good e-reader video. This is Nick. And this is Marcus. Today we have the Pocketbook Pro 902. This is the um, 9.7 inch uh, Pocketbook e-reader compared to the other 6 inch, 7 inch e-readers. So this is the newest one that Pocketbook has put out in this 9.7 inch class. Before we get into navigating and showing off a bunch of features, we just want to lay on you all the specs. So there's no touch panel, but you can navigate via the trackpad here as well as uh, the intro button. It has a 533 megahertz Samsung CPU processor. It has 256 megabytes of RAM, and it has two gigs of internal memory. But you can increase this up to about 32 gigs via a micro SD card. It does Wi-Fi for uh, wireless connectivity. It has stereo output and headphone jack. It does have an accelerometer. You have roughly about 7,000 page turns, which is the equivalent of about you know 30 or 40 different uh, eBooks that you're gonna read. But we do recommend that if you're gonna want to get more battery life, just have your Wi-Fi off. It comes in a dark gray or white, so you can see that this is the dark gray model. It retails roughly a little over $300 US. It has 16 levels of grayscale. Uh, for ebook formats, it reads PDF, HTML, doc, EPUB, text, RTF, FB2, and if you want to listen to music on a device, it does MP3. If you want to look at pictures, it does JPEG, TIFF, BMP, and P PNG. So now that we got some of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at what the device um, hardware features are. So you can see right here that it does have a little green light there, and that's only evident when you're navigating a menu. Think of this as like an internal hard drive light. Uh, here is your headphone jack, your speakers, the hard reset button, US M micro USB, and uh, micro SD. So that's where you would slot it in. If you look at uh, right here, we have zoom in and zoom out buttons as well as volume up and down. You have your power button on the top, so this is much akin to the Kindle uh, DX. And uh, if you look at the back here, it's uh, very slick and chromey. Uh, we're just going to put this down for a moment. So you can see that it does have a built-in accelerometer so you can throw it from uh, landscape to portrait mode. Uh, you can see that we have turned it on and we have gone through the initial configuration, setting up our language and settings. And we've done this on a previous video, which is the unboxing of the Pocketbook Pro 902. So if you want to see what it looks like with first time setup, you can check out an, uh, our other video. And of course, all of our videos are on youtube.com slash user slash good e-reader. And they're also on our blog at goodereader.com slash blog. So, it does come with a built in dictionary and it roughly has about a thousand ebooks, although they are spread out in many different languages. So let's take a look at one of the first things here, which is uh, the library. Uh, as well, here, here's your uh, home settings button as well as page turning and we'll get into the page turning right away when we check out some books. So you can see here that it does have a number of books in uh, different languages, uh, German, Dutch, Finn, French, etc. So let's check a look at some, uh, some of the English titles. You can see here that switching between screens is relatively fast despite the fact that it is only a 533 megahertz processor. Let's check out Robert Burns. So it is an EPUB format. In a subsequent follow-up video, we we'll actually will teach you how to uh, manually load eBooks onto your device. So if you have downloaded a number of books from the internet, or if you have an existing eBook library, we'll teach you sort of how to do that. So you can see that we're page turning it this way here. So 
so it's not too bad. One of the nice features on this is you can see that uh, if you've seen our videos or if you have a Kindle DX, you know that it's designed for right and left handed users. So right now we're set on right handed mode. If we wanted to turn it forward, we hit this, back with this. One of the nice things about with the built in accelerometer is if you are left handed, and we'll just sort of let it refresh for a moment. Sometimes it's uh, very finicky. Okay, so you notice that when you had it in a right-handed mode this was the back button but when you have it in this mode this will actually turn pages forward so despite the fact that it doesn't have right and left-handed buttons if you flip it over like this it actually will make it so if you're left-handed it'll make it a little bit easier to interact with the device so we just wanted to show you that so you can see that the resolution is very crisp and clear. Now that you've seen a little bit of ebooks, let's see uh, what else that we have here. So we're just hitting the home button. We've looked at the library feature. You can take notes as well as it does have some built-in applications. Uh, it has games, a web browser, and so on, but the web browser is only accessible if you have a Wi-Fi configured. A Wi-Fi is a bit tricky to set up. So you have calculator, chess, clock, as well as some news type apps, um, some other type of games. Of course, you do have your full dictionary. So if you want to check up some words, uh, even in different languages, you can do that, as well as get their definitions and meanings, as well as it has tons of different dictionaries, um, you know, French, Spanish to English, German, and so on. So it's nice that it does have a, a quite a number of dictionaries based on whatever your language preference is. Uh, it does have a music player, although it is only uh, doing MP3s. But out of uh, this, you know, the two speakers, it is kind of nice as far as uh, music goes. We don't have any music preloaded onto the device, but in a follow-up video, we will teach you how to copy media to it. Uh, let's take a look at some of the photos. With e-inks, photos go tremendously well. Hopefully it comes across in a video on how crisp it really looks. We're just going to load up simply one picture. So you can see here that the picture is in e-ink, but it looks damn fine. Now the 16 levels of grayscale really shine with being able to get really, really crisp looking pictures. Of course, there are about 10 or so odd pictures, but you can load in your own pictures into this. So if you've taken photos, family vacations, friends, and so on, you can definitely load them in. It has a good search feature if you want to search for book titles, notes, or any other content that you load onto it. You also have a configuration menu here. You know, basically the standard type of stuff about the device. Let's you know how much RAM is available, serial number, you know, how much is uh, memory you have for free. Uh, you can also do things such as setting the language, keyboard, user profiles, you know, changing a bit about the appearance. So you can check out different type of themes. Uh, you can lock in screen, or in screen orientation. So if you want to read it in portrait mode, but you don't want it to switch to landscape, if you inadvertently move it in one direction uh, to another, you can change that. Uh, you can also change, you know, logos to specific pictures and so on. Text rendering, full page updates and so on. So we're just going to hit the back menu here. 
Of course, you have a clock you can set up so when uh, you're powering on how it, you know, what type of things it does. So you can do it for the main menu or the last open book. It's uh, connectivity is very finicky. Uh, if you want to set up, uh, say, a network or Bluetooth, you can set up like the wireless connections, but it is a bit difficult to actually set these up. Nothing's really automatic like a lot of other e-readers where by default a list of networks will appear. A lot of times there's a lot of extra steps that you have to take. So this is one of the drawbacks on uh, the entire pocketbook line is it's pretty hard to set up your Wi-Fi, especially if you have a longer password. In some cases it took us around 20 minutes or so to be able to set up a password that was mixed upper lowercase letters and uh, different symbols and such so be prepared for a long time to set it up uh, all in all we really like this um, as far as pictures and everything else it resolutes really well as you can as you saw when we had uh, ebooks open the page turns are, 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 are not too shabby at all in comparison to uh, e-readers such as uh, the original Kobo e-reader which turning pages sometimes took you know, a full second and a half. You can see here when we're turning pages. It's not too, it's not too bad, but we've seen a lot of other e-readers such as uh, the Barnes & Noble uh, Nook, Wi-Fi, and 3G. Uh, even the, the Kindles, which pretty well lead the pack in fast page turns. Hopefully, they'll be fixed in, in a, you know, follow-up firmware update. But with uh, the pocketbook lines, they do not have automatic Wi-Fi firmware updates that you'll see in other e-readers, such as uh, the Barnes & Noble, especially, or uh, especially uh, the Kobo Wireless as well. A lot of the times you can do updates right over Wi-Fi. It'll give you an indication that an update's available, ask you if you want to update it. You can simply say yes or no. With the pocketbook, you actually have to uh, hook it up to the computer, transfer it to your SD card that you have on your pocketbook, and then do some manually um, updates. If you want to find out about the whole entire update procedure, you can check out our forum at goodyreader.com slash forum and check out the pocketbook section where we have all of our videos, manuals, user guides, firmware updates, and tutorials. So you can check that out. It's a long process, so we don't want to really want to get into it in the video. Uh, but all in all, um, for the price, which is a little over 300 US, you can't get really much better than um, um, than the pocketbook uh, 902 in a 9.7 inch class in e-readers. There really isn't a whole lot of uh, of options. You know, you have the Kindle DX. You know, you have the pocketbook Pro 902. Really, there's not very many large screen e-readers that are on the market. So pretty well if you're looking for a 9.7 inch e-reader the Kindle DX and the pocketbook are your options the Kindle is a little bit more expensive whereas the pocketbook is a little bit lower in cost but you do sacrifice some of the features especially having hard uh, right-hand and left-handed menus pocketbook does make up for it and being able to flip it to the other mode for in order to accommodate left-handed users We'd like to see in uh, firmware updates with the Pocketbook 902, uh, the Wi-Fi aspect of it, having things a little bit more automatic. And we'd like to see being able to switch between portrait and landscape to be a little bit more snappier. Um, when we reviewed the Kindle DX, which is the main competition to this one, flipping between landscape and portrait mode is really solid. Some of the strong things that this one has going for it is that it does do a lot of different formats as far as ebooks go. Um, PDF, HTML, EPUB, uh, RTF, and so on. That accounts for a large number of the books that you would just straight up download on the internet as well as books that have digital rights management so you'll be able to read them no problem. Uh, in a follow-up video, like I said, we will show you how to transfer ebooks 
media content and everything up to it. So if you've never done it before, stay tuned for more videos from Goody Reader. And this has been a, a review of the Pocketbook Pro 902 9.7 inch e-reader. For Goody Reader, this is Marcus. This is Nick. Everybody take care.